This is a brief tour of the front panel of my homebrew computer known as the Cactus. It's a work in progress of about a past year, and it's still got some things that need to be worked out, but the front panel itself is actually mostly operational, which surprises me to no end. Uh, I thought this thing was going to be broken forever. So, let's go over the grouping of the switches, how they work, and then we'll actually play with it a little bit, which will be fun. The CPU itself is still not able to run programs, so I'm still working on that. So, unfortunately we can't run anything just yet. First things first, power switch, which is a key. I always wanted to have one of these. I thought they looked cool. And then we have our status control switches. These are dual momentaries with status lights for various things. Reset, run, up is run, down is halt. Reset, doesn't matter which direction you hit it, it'll, it'll send a reset signal. Step, it's supposed to be down or up, but right now I just have it set for down. I had an idea that needs to be changed back. Protect is setting protect, clearing protect, so that you can keep your memory um, safe from CPU noodling. Then we have examine is up, down is examine next, deposit is up, deposit next is down. Then we have all eight of our data control switches. You can clear a bit or set a bit depending on if you bring it up or down. Then we have our address toggles. Down is a one, up is a zero. This is the least significant bit, this is the most significant bit. And you can talk to all 64k of address space with those switches. Alright, so let's turn it on and play with it. Right now it defaults to run mode, and so I always have to tell it no halt. And that's okay. That'll be changed soon enough. So, first things first. Let's see about visiting an address and seeing what's there. Uh, and in this case, we're starting at address zero, but let's see what's going on higher up. Let's try uh, zero F, zero F. Bring it up for examine. Sure enough, we can see that the lights now match what the switches are at. And we can see some values are on that address the data bus, which is cool. So now, say we want to see what's directly after that, but we don't want to have to reset all of these address switches. We can do an examine next. Sure enough, we've incremented by one address. Uh, keep seeing what's going on there. Seems to be a lot of FFs up here. That's fine. Fun. And then let's say we want to hop right back to where the switches are still set. Use that examine, start over. Makes things easy. So I've got a small little program we can enter in here. Nothing spectacular. It was designed for the OSI 300. This is a miniature OSI 300. It will do for the moment, just for the sake of demonstration. So, we have. We're already sitting at address zero, and that's where we want to start. And we want to clear and set some bits here. We want to set these two. We want to clear this one. Right now, everything that's happening on these eight switches is being stored in flip-flops. We're not directly affecting the data bus just yet. This is, uh, this is purely within the front panel logic. And that's kind of the point. We have a kind of a workspace to then modify bytes that we're reading in from RAM or ROM. Obviously we can't modify something in ROM, but uh, we can still see it there and we can play with it and that's kind of fun. So, uh, there we go. That's the first thing, the first byte that we want to mess with, and we're just going to do a regular old deposit on this one. 
how do we know that that actually wrote into RAM? Well, we're gonna we're gonna check that afterward. Um, and we're gonna go through the whole program in one one go afterward just to make sure it's all there. But for the sake of demonstration, let's pretend that we want to just hop to something else. It doesn't really matter what. And then go back to where we were. Sure enough, there's the byte that we just entered. Cool. Um, we're doing an examine next. So we've incremented our address, and now we're going to change what byte is here. So clear these bits and set this one. I mean, this time we're going to hit deposit next. Great. So now we've done a deposit and we've incremented our address and seen what's on that address all in one button press. Saves us from having to do examine next, deposit, examine next, deposit. Alright, what goes here? It really doesn't matter, but for the sake of fun, we might as well put in a real program that can be run somewhere else. Deposit next. Okay. This one is... Here we go. And this one's just zeros. You'll notice every time that I hit deposit or deposit next, the light above examine uh, illuminates briefly, and that's us strobing the read-write line. And that's actually the inverse of the read-write line, but because you don't want it on all the time, I thought I thought it looked nicer this way. Now, what were we doing? And, okay. And this one is all zeros. So all zeros. Sometimes the protect light comes on without me telling it to. Couldn't tell you why. It doesn't do anything at this stage. It's just kind of there. Oh well. And this part isn't actually part of the program. This is where the program will deposit an eight. All it's doing is a uh, load immediate register x with five, uh, and then store x to memory location eight, and then just loop infinitely back to zero until it gets all the way through. Uh, but we're still going to put a, a zero there, so we know we wrote over an empty uh, an empty address. So, let's start over and just see that our program showed up the way it was supposed to. Yep, that looks right. That looks right. That looks right. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now we're getting into other territory, and we can see, oh, there's other stuff here. That's cool. So, this makes things easier for visiting all kinds of memory addresses. For example, first byte of the reset vector, next byte, all the way up to the top, and then it loops right back to where it began. Cool. In theory, I should be able to do a. Whoops, sorry, wrong direction. One of those. And let the CPU take over and run software. But, well, sadly, it doesn't actually work as well as I'd hope. And, <laughs> oh well, we'll live. One thing to note, though, when machine is set to run, the CPU uh, is supposed to be given control of the buses instead of the front panel logic, and as such, we want to see immediately what is going on on the address bus and on the data bus. Address bus, that's easy. You're always watching what, what address that you're sitting in. Data bus, there's specific logic to tell the flip-flops to be quiet and to let the um, data bus directly access those LEDs, which is take a little bit of time to get quite right. So might as well show off what's actually going on inside the machine itself. Got a handful of cards. 
RAM, 32K of it. EEPROM, 16K. CPU itself. This is a mostly minimally decoded um, UART. Sixty-eight fifty to be specific. This is the status control card, which governs these switches here, but also controls the other two cards to tell them what to do for front panel operation. This is data control, address control, and this is a little debug card that I put together to help me figure out certain problems. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed and.